Capcom says no fun allowed when it comes to mods that other developers should be concerned about mods that offend the public. All right, happy Halloween, by the way. <laughs> Let's uh, dive into the video. So here we have uh, coming to us from Bounding into Comics. They said Capcom takes aim at PC game modding, says developers should be concerned over mods that are offensive to public order and morals. What is their morals, first of all? Like, where do they get their morals from? That's what I want to know. And what they deem offensive or not offensive. This is the thing with these kind of, well, this kind of topic in general when it comes to mods and things like that is you're not going to stop the PC community from modding things. You're just not. And also, at the end of the day, who freaking cares? Is some of it degenerate? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I saw a very degen Leon Kennedy mod the other day. It was awful. <laughs> so, yes, there is some degenerate mods. But you can't police this stuff. You just can't. This is the internet. All right? It, it, <laughs> degens are good at degens regard degen regardless but also some of the mods are actually really fun some of the mods fix things for example uh with this day and age where we're at with characters a lot of them are being uglified or made to look different than what they originally looked like for example and so a lot of these mods actually make the characters more recognizable to their original selves um so you know some of these mods are actually really cool. So anyway, let's continue reading. In a move that's both concerning and unsurprising given the ongoing rise in anti-consumer rhetoric across nearly every industry, Capcom has officially declared their opposition to the concept of PC game modding. We already have like websites like Nexus mods that really take things to a stupid level where they're taking mods down for different reasons. For example, with the Spider-Man mod, somebody made a mod where it took all the pride flags down and replaced them with American flags. And then I'm pretty sure they got banned for that or that at the very least that mod got taken down. Things like that. It's like, why? Why would you take that down? You know what I mean? Like, unless something is illegal, okay, um, or maybe a mod website doesn't want something completely pornographic on it for example because you know it would ruin the integrity of their website or have not be able to display ads things of that nature okay i get it with that you know if i had a modding website i wouldn't want i would not want the uh the x-rated stuff on there uh, but anyway, uh, but that's like up the, to the discretion of the website itself. People who are going to play these, some of people are going to play with creepy, weird Sonic the Hedgehog <laughs> rule 34 mods anyway. <laughs> you can't stop them. All right. So the Mega Man developer made clear their stance on the topic during their recent Capcom Open Conference Professional RE 2023 an industry-centric conference where at attendee, attendees are provided by Capcom, by Capcom themselves with an in-depth look at the latest advances in RE Engine, which is further evolving to meet the challenges of various game genres such as Resident Evil 4, Street Fighter 6, Exo Primal, and Ghost Trick, as well as being able to support new platforms. Hosting a panel on the topic of anti-cheat and anti-piracy measures in PC games uh, recommendations for in-house production. Capcom programmer Taro Yahagi, <laughs> I probably butchered that, raised alarm over the fact that PC games give a high degree of freedom, but they are also free to be tampered with. I just... That's the, the thing with this is when they start drawing too many lines. They seem more concerned about removing things like those American flags, things like that. I don't know. I don't like it. Don't like it. All right. Unfortunately, while their anti-tampering efforts may have had a better chance of garnering widespread support that they kept them trained solely on thieves and multiplayer cheaters, Capcom's cause was self-torpedoed by Yaga Yahagi's 
<laughs> Yagagi, by Yahagi's declaration in the company's eyes, all mods are defined as cheats, except when they are officially supported. See, I don't like it. I don't like it. What modders are doing internally is no different than cheating. Oh, big mad, big mad. What does it make? What difference does it make? It's just like, okay, look at Jill Valentine on the Resident Evil 3 remake, for example. A lot of people wanted to play her with closer to her actual classic design and her classic outfit. And so people modded that. Doesn't seem like they like that kind of stuff. That's what I feel like the majority of people who are going to want to use mods are going to want to do. Um, there's like a degenerate creepy sector of it. But I really do think that most people, they want to enhance their gaming experience um, and you know, if somebody were able to make this perfect, amazing, classic Lara Croft mod for the rebooted games where she actually looks like classic Lara Croft. I know people have taken a crack at some of the mods and stuff, but um, I think it was a little more difficult to do with the Tomb Raider reboots. I don't know what for what reason. I know the original rebooted game, they've done a better job with it, though. And I did play as a uh, I, I did. I made a video about it on my old channel, honestly. So there are some mods that try to make Lara Croft look more like her original self. Um, stuff like that. I'm all about it, man. I would much rather play with the character designs that people are modding when they're making the characters more recognizable to their classic counterparts than all the changes these companies are making to said characters. Uh, all right, let's just continue. Mods are popular with users because they allow them to add or change various features to an existing game, exclaim, explain the programmer. However, for the purpose of anti-cheat and anti-piracy, all mods are defined as cheats. That is to say that mods that are not officially supported by the game are impossible to distinguish from cheat tools implementation-wise. Dude, wouldn't surprise me if they really are trying to crack down on making it where people can't mod games, which would suck. All right, so the majority of mods can have a positive impact on the game, he continued. That's true. How, some mods, however, can be detrimental to the company, both in terms of reputational damage and in terms of workload. Bro, like, I get it in some capacity, like, if you don't want, like I said, if you don't want your characters modded in like a pornographic fashion, I get why they wouldn't want that. But it's just, you can't police all this stuff because then it's just like no mods at all. And some mods are great. The thing is, is if people make gross, weird mods, I don't think that reflects on the company, uh, you know, but I digress. All right, so to this end, the Capcom employee then declared, there are a number of mods that are offensive to public order and morals. When these are disseminated, the image of the product is tarnished and branding is affected. Also, these offensive mods may be mistaken for legitimate implementations and can cause reputational damage. Are they calling this offensive? I don't really think this is that crazy um i'm curious i know there's definitely some offensive mod let's not play like there isn't but yeah for the most part what most people are playing are not so much especially what we're seeing like on streams videos all that kind of stuff some malicious mods can also destroy the game by cheating yahagi added in the worst case, they can cause freezes and corrupt save data. If you have a mod that destroys your data and you contact our customer support, they will have a difficult time investigating the issue and will spend a lot of time working on it. As the customer support load increases, it will eventually circle back around and affect development cost. If the development costs are affected, the quality of the game will decline. He then concluded of this specific discussion on mods, this will lead to a drop in sales and loss of revenue, as well as disappointment among users. This is not a situation anyone wants to be in. In other words, anti-cheat and anti-piracy measures are very important to protect the company's future profits and reputation. All right. 
why okay this is a mod of ken from street fighter 5 implemented into street fighter 6 but <laughs> why i want to know why because it's, it's look at street fighter 5 was awful i hated it street fighter 6 upgraded ken uh, but I digress. Anyway, like here we have Ada Wong in a Jill Valentine from Rising Evil 5 costume. It's cool. It's fun. There's nothing offensive about this. Um, but let's continue. Having said his piece on the company's outlook on modding, Yahagi then proceeded to spend the rest of his time on stage discussing the more technical and organizational aspects of implementing and more notably improving various software security measures, particularly those pertaining to the RE engine itself. Notably, though, Yahagi did not explicitly note any efforts being taken against non-malicious modders, his presentation did ultimately conclude with a call for developers to remain diligent in an ever-evolving legion of vaguely defined cheaters and pirates. Okay, now, I do have somewhat of a nuanced take on this, I will say, because on one hand, I do really like the modding community. I don't really use mods a whole lot, though. I will admit I've used some mods with Tomb Raider to uh, like with the classic games, for example. OK, here's a lighting mod. Here's a, a like larger field of view mod. Um, things that make the game run better performance mods. I do use those on the classic games sometimes, especially Angel Darkness. Because that needs it bad. It's broken. Like the way that she wa slow walks before she does that jog. That is just a pain in the butt. So there's mods that like take that out. Uh, mods that let her have dual pistols in Angel of Darkness. Because otherwise she doesn't. Uh, so I like those. Uh, and even mods that, you know, like I said earlier. That made Lara Croft more look more like classic Lara Croft. Uh, and made her more accurate things you know fun things like that I remember back in the day even making a there's this like text mod I made one back in what was that uh Tomb Raider Underworld I believe I, I, I wanted to make her the movie costume I think it was if I can remember correctly um but yeah so you could just take the textures and edit them in Photoshop and put them back in the game um, so I do remember playing around with that, playing around with Lyra Croft's makeup and it was super fun. So there's mods like that that are really, really fun, but there are, there are, I can, I can see how talking from a technical element here, like if a mod is actually breaking the game and then they're on the phone with customer supports, things of that nature, if that is actually a thing that happens regularly, okay, I get it. Uh, and in that case, maybe the first question they should be asking is, is your game modded? Because that will affect your performance and so on and so forth. And that may be uh, part of the case here. And, you know, reinstall the game without the mods and then we'll talk type situation. Um, not that people couldn't lie, but they could lie about a number of things anyway and waste their time. So there's that. Um, I do get how if a mod goes super viral of like, Leon Kennedy in a Lara Croft outfit. <laughs> I'm, I'm being very specific here <laughs> with tiny shorts <laughs> that went viral on Twitter. It was disturbing. <laughs> it was very disturbing. So yeah, I get that. <laughs> I get where they feel like, okay, this is not, this is not good for the brand image. I can understand it. I'm not going to lie. But my only concern with stuff like this is if they start cracking down on mods, then you risk like them coming after the harmless mods, them coming after the mods that, you know, for example, with like I said earlier with Spider-Man or people want to take out the pride flags and replace them with American flags. Because, you know, for many people uh, with their religions, they might be Christians or uh, and they don't want to have all those pride flags in it, you know, and so. That, to me, is harmless. And so for them to be cracking down on things like that, you know, that would be that would be wrong, I would think. So, yeah, I don't know. It's kind of a nuanced discussion here. Uh, but I'm curious what you guys think in the comments below. So feel free to weigh in. I think at the end of the day, 
you can't control, you really can't control people on this kind of stuff. Uh, I think, I, I think it would be better to, at this point, to just let it go. Uh, let it go unless it actually becomes a huge problem because when you try to police some of it then there's just too many gray areas there that can really go crazy now like I said for some of the really egregious stuff I could see modding sites not wanting them but again we've already seen them go out of hand with that nexus mods for example uh, you know they don't like you taking out anything the lgbt or the pronoun situation um, they don't like you taking out pronoun options, things like that. So yeah, it's one of those things. Anyway, there you have it for today's video. Thank you all so much for hanging out with me today. And don't forget to read your Bible. And if you want me to read the Bible to you, you can right here on the end screen, I'll have it or in the link tree in the comments, you can subscribe to my Bible channel, Bible time with Melanie Mac. Thank you again. I'll catch you next time. And in the meantime, go boom.